During the first full week of February 2013 at the Stanley Hotel, renovations began in the second floor rooms and also the first floor lobby where they were replacing the hardwood floor. Because of these renovations, the hotel had to be shut down to all guests in the main building. Incredibly wild. Stanley Hotel, you can't really get the gist in the video, but every single light is off in the hotel as far as the rooms go. You know, there is nobody in the main building. Fellow Stanley Hotel investigator and friend Connor Randall and I took it upon ourselves to investigate that Thursday night in the now completely empty Stanley Hotel. But we will be alone. A-L-O-N-E. Alone. In the dark. Yeah. <laughs> we go from the lodge and we walk in this direction. Okay. So you're over here. I have a wider stride, so you're kind of like a little bit slower. Like that. We're going to kick this little ball that I bought from Walmart today. And maybe the ball will like stop in midair, you know? And get just like pull you in the face. That's, what I, that's ideally what would happen. Wait, okay. we gotta stop in one of the cars first. And then go in. Because I gotta drop the briefcase. Okay, okay. so it'd be like this for me and like that. For you. Yeah. We're hanging out up here for any spirits who wanna come along. Chilling out. This, you know, out of all the big haunted locations in America, uh, it's fair to say that the Stanley's on that list, and yet it's really the only one that I can think of that's never empty. Uh, it's still an operating hotel, and it's a popular hotel. So, uh, you got a bump downstairs. And then that door just kind of bumped, too. Stephen King, when he was here, the notorious story about Stephen King was he was here on the last day of the season in 76 and wandering these hotel hallways by himself gave him the inspiration for The Shining. And here we are, 40 years later, investigating this hotel, just the two of us, in the almost the exact same way. It's a winter evening, it's quiet, um, it's completely empty in this hotel, no contamination. There's that line between ghost hunt and paranormal investigation, um, whereas, you know, a lot of the times we are sort of doing that thrill-seeking thing and getting out there. Uh, but tonight, it's, it's an investigation, and we're going to hit this place hard. We're going to try to debunk noises and things like that, but, and we're going to play kickball in the hallway here. You have the little ball here. We won't play, you know, parkour or anything, but uh, we'll hit it around and see if the little kids want to come out and play with us. And this is, this is the true opportunity to do this, and this will really probably be the only time um, in our lifetime career as ghost hunters that the Stanley Hotel will be empty. The night was quiet in terms of concrete paranormal activity. And neither Connor nor I have had the chance yet to go over all of our evidence and see if there might have been something happening unseen and unheard to us. There's not a super great feeling in this hall just walking down it. Like it feels really like stirred up, like unsettled almost. Mm -hmm. What? Hello? All right, audio, you're right there. Listen for that. It was like, like somebody maybe pushed in a box. Oh, we heard it. Can you do that again? Not sure what that was, or if it was anything paranormal. But the craziest part of the night did come at 3 o'clock in the morning, sitting on the fourth floor hallway by ourselves with only the security guard Donnie with us. A strange presence fell over the hallway that lasted for 20 full minutes, a kind of severe intensity that, as Connor described it the next day, seemed as if the whole hotel had become alive. It felt as if anyone at any moment could walk out of one of the rooms and startle us. It felt as if a group of people might be about to come up the stairs and be startled by us sitting there in the hallway in the dark. The severity of the energy felt like inherent fear. It was completely baseless. We'd been investigating for hours. There was nothing particularly scary happening and our imaginations weren't running away with us. It fell deep across your bones right off the bat, 
and you had this feeling that something was about to happen. Catch that, Donnie? No. That was down toward you, it sounded like. And as soon as it came, it left. 20 minutes later, 30 minutes later, we all looked around at each other and agreed, it's gone. It stopped. This is the same kind of energy that Stephen King spoke of in his story, The Shining, where he speaks about Lovecraftian type powers possessing an entire building. Could you do that again, please? Of course, we don't know what experience Stephen King may or may not have had if he was wandering around at three in the morning, if he felt the same energy, or if the story was already with him and just needed a home. But we felt that energy that night. It was severe. It was undeniable. Whether ghosts or not, the Stanley Hotel has power. And for just that night, it was only the three of us experiencing the entire hotel. One of those nights, though, where, like, you know, very much the activity, you know, hit and miss. It happens like that. Ghost hunting is about patience. It's like fishing that way. But one of those nights where the experience alone, plain and simple, incredibly 